Yay! Just had a nice mega dose of vitamin C. Yay! What if I said something as stupid as a slap was a particle? And then, like, the whole world started believing in a slap particle. <laughs> that sounds kind of ludicrous, doesn't it? The whole world does believe in stuff like that. Now, there is a fundamental particle. It's a building block of all atoms, of course. An attack against atomism and uh, materialism, which, of course, is what atomism is, is not a denial of the fundamental particle of the universe. However, Mother Nature, as I've said, is... You know, not a chick with uh, thick glasses and a calculator and a slide rule. The only thing she knows is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Charge and discharge, all fields are nothing other than ether perturbation modalities. So, since whatever you think of me is completely irrelevant, I'm going to go over what was said by the wisest minds who lived, a la field theory. Tesla, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Maxwell, about this neat little thing called an atom, uh, excuse me, not an atom, but an electron. Excuse me, I uh, slip, slip of the tongue there, I said atom. I meant to say electron. Um, by the way, if you ever run into a scientist, ask him, uh, excuse me, is the, is the charge and discharge always the flow of electrons? And they will invariably always say, yes it is. So just ask him how wireless charge induction works in a vacuum. Wireless charge. There's actually several patents. They're going to be coming out soon. Be like charging your iPhone and your iPad in the same room from a distance from a plug-in device you plug in the wall. Of course, it's going to make your dog chase its uh, tail around and your cat climb the walls because it will drive them crazy. Because those are harmonic resonances with brain tissue and cats and dogs are more sensitive. But yeah, just ask him. Says, yeah, I thought you said. Uh, charge and discharge was the flow of electrons. That's right. Well, so how does wireless power induction work? And of course, they'll never have an answer for you. Well, so what's fields? Like, well, yeah, but scientists never define a field. Well, they'll start working their way into a circular argumentation with they're like ch the dog chasing his tail. So let's go on to Nikola Tesla and uh, some of the stuff that he said here very shortly. But I'd first like to make an accurate description of what an electron is. And we'll also, too, very shortly talk about an a, a electron microscope, because explaining that is actually extremely easy. Anyway, these so-called electrons are not particles, nor objects or subjects, but they're dynamic principle of discharge and certainly not charged carriers. Fields are not particles, nor are they electrons, nor assuredly are there energy discharges in the vacuum of space involving electrons, not to mention, and there's no such thing as a photon either. This light particle is completely ridiculous. The notion of a light particle is based on rarefaction and compression of the coaxial circuit that is light, which is what light is. So, the electron idea principle is a fiction, a fallacy, observation, and even more so a faulty mental, of a faulty, a faulty uh, mental acuity. Um, spawned naturally from the minds of materialists has meant uh, atomists, electricity is of course ether in a state of dynamic polarization. Magnetism is the ether in a state of dynamic circular polarization upon itself and is of course the radiative uh, termination of electrical discharge. Dielectricity is the ether under stress or strain as I've said before and so have others. Um, the motions and stress of the strain of the ether give rise to electrification whose unit is conceptualized incorrectly. Uh, as an electron. By the way, the discoverer of the principle of uh, the electron, and J.J. Thompson, in his uh, electronic corpuscle as mentioned by Faraday, calls this an indivisible unit. One corpuscle terminates on one faradic tube of force, and this quantifies as one coulomb. This corpuscle is not an electron. It is a constituent of what uh, today we call uh, the electron, you know, this notion. By the way, Thompson re uh, relates uh, 1,000 corpuscles per electron. You know, these are fanciful concepts, but an electron particle, of course, does not exist. This is a quote from Dollar, by the way. In this view, is taken from Crookes and J.J. Thompson and Nikola Tesla, the cathode ray tube, is not electrons, but in actuality corpuscles of the ether. And also, too, uh, like to talk about J.J. Uh, Thompson, because J.J. Thompson said the electron was one unit of dielectric induction, the idea of the electron. This is Nikola Tesla interview, November 1928, uh, from Popular Science Mon Monthly, 
An article is called A Famous Prophet of Science Looks into the Future. On the whole subject of the matter, in fact, uh, Nikola Tesla, says Dr. Tesla, holds the view that is startlingly original. He disagrees with the accepted atomic theory of matter and does not believe in the existence of an electron as pictured by science. You say science, you got to think of like some priests in a weird cult, because that's all science is today anyway. It's a bunch of atomists of academia wearing the robes of priests. We're the priests of science. Nothing is true, unless we say so. To account for its apparently small mass, according to Tesla, science conceives of the electron as a hollow sphere, a sort of bubble. Such a bubble could exist in a medium as a gas or a liquid because its internal pressure is not altered by deformation. But if, as suppose, the internal pressure of an electron is due to the repulsion of electric masses, the slightest conceivable deformation must result in the destruction of the bubble. Just to mention another improbability. Um, here we go. Here's Ms. Uh, Tesla again. My ideas regarding the electron are at variance with those generally entertained. I hold that it is a relatively large entity carrying a surface charge and is not an elementary unit or particle. When the so-called electron leaves an electrode of high potential and in a high vacuum, it carries an electrostatic charge many times greater than that of normal. Um, here's Walter Russell. To describe an electron as a negatively charged body is equivalent to saying that it is an expanding, contracting particle. There's no such condition in nature as a negative charge, nor are there negatively charged particles. Charge and discharge are opposite conditions. That's filling and emptying or compressing and expanding are opposite conditions. Here's uh, Mr. Dollard. There is no rest mass to an electron. It is given here, the electron is no more than a broken loose holdfast. I don't know if you know what a holdfast is. You know, people buckle stuff over a tractor trailer. You know, they buckle this holdfast to hold stuff down onto the tractor trailer. Also, holdfast. Under the grip of tension within the dielectric lines of force. These lines, of course, also don't exist, by the way, I want to mention. And force is merely a concept. They are broken ends of the split, uh, split ends of a package of uh, spaghetti. Um, obviously, this reasoning is not welcomed in Einstein's theory of relativity. Here's C.P. Steinmetz, way smarter than you or anybody that you know, way smarter, especially on fields and electricity. Unfortunately, to a large extent in dealing with the dielectric field, the prehistoric conception of electrostatic charge, the electron on the conductor still exists, and by its use destroys the analogy between the com two components of the electric field, the magnetic and the dielectric. This makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. He said this in 1916. I think it was published in 1917. He says flat out there's no such thing as an electron. It's just a concept. There is no such thing as an electron, by the way. If you think that trillions of little uh, electron beads are flowing down the power lines <coughs> out the back of your house, you're crazy, of course. That's a psychosis. Um, the idea of electricity as the flow of electrons in a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside. Oliver Heaviside, again, way more intelligent than you or anybody you know, especially on fields of electricity. He called this a psychosis, and this encouraged Heaviside to begin a series of writings. Here's Dr. Stephen Biller. Electrons as separate, distinct entities does not really exist. They are merely bumps in something called a field. At least he admits he doesn't know what a field is. And the first person that ever defined a field, by the way, is the ether perturbation modality. Very accurate and very succinct. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you cannot say that stretching a trillion rubber bands nailed to the floor and releasing them or breaking their force lines is a flow of electrons. Discharge is a terminal movement in systems of inductance or dielectric capacitance. There are no distinct particles in the universe, and certainly none that mediate out charges, discharges, and magnetism. Electromagnetism, gravity, radiation, only fields, all modalities of which are the ether. The so-called electrons are not particles, not objects or subjects, but are dynamic principles of discharge, and certainly not charge carriers. Fields are not particles, and they are not electrons. Nor assuredly are there energy discharges in the vacuum of space involving electrons. The uh, materialists or atomists, electricity is just an ether state of dynamic polarization, on and on and go on this. Anyway, the scanning electron microscope utilizes vacuum conditions and uses electrons, you know, to form images under special preparations which must be applied to the object being prepared. 
all water must be removed from the sample because water would vaporize in the vacuum where the vacuum chamber goes. All metals are conductive and they never require preparation before being scanned by the SEM. All non-metals, however, need to be made conductive by covering the same sample with a thin layer of conductive material. This is done by a device called a, uh, a sputter coater. It actually takes uh, atomized gold and it will spray on the uh, subject, uh, the object to be scanned because now as a dielectric, dielectrically reflective service that can now be scanned by the SEM. So explaining, that's what people always say, well, how does an electron microscope work? Like, really? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the problem we got here. Yeah, I, you'll use the word quantum, too. You know, quantum, what about quantum? Can quantum computers work? Well, I could call my microwave a quantum heating device, but that doesn't give reification to the term quantum. Um, now, here's one even by the idiot uh, Albert Einstein on electrons. Random House Publisher, 1960. In the theoretical treatment of these electrons, we are faced with difficulty of electrodynamic theory by itself, unable to give an account for their nature. For since electrical masses cons uh, uh, constituting the electron would necessarily be scattered under the influence of their mutual repulsion, unless there are forces of another kind operating between them, the nature of which has hitherto remained obscure to us. In other words, the chief found founder of uh, modern day atomism himself brings up uh, you know the obvious uh, mutually contradictory nonsense of a charge carrying particle charge and discharge is not the flow of electrons and the principle of electron is undeniable so is that of light but there's no such thing as a photon there's no such thing as a charge carrying particle that called the electron it's completely ridiculous all atoms by the way say, what about atoms you know and they have uh, valence layers. Well, they do, but these valence layers, of course, and all atoms, as I've said a thousand times, are nothing other than electrostatic dynamo. And they actually create charge under valences, just as a magnet actually has valences of its magnetic field in Gaussian strength. I mean, we can't say an, uh, a big magnet, say this big, is uh, an atom, but we can actually make, you know, a crude analogy in talking about uh, the nature of a Gaussian flux. Now, let's say if this ma atom, which that's all an atom is, let's say the most basic atom, hydrogen, just one proton, which is, of course, the fundamental building block of the entire universe, is, and an atom is nothing other than an electrostatic dynamo. It is spinning. It is spinning at infinitesimal speed. We have no idea at what speed, of course. And, of course, the fundamental building block of matter is nothing other than super high-energy light. Well, what it's doing is it's creating an electrostatic dynamo with a shell around it, and what we call valence layers are nothing other than layers of electrostatic charge. But they're not like, a le you know, X number of electrons rotating this valence level and two uh, electrons rotating at that valence level. It's completely ridiculous. Now, these charge potentials are undeniable, and we can actually explain a molecular coupling, whether it be water or any other molecule, not by electrons uh, sharing valences, but the actual mutual harmonic of these uh, principles of the electron, which are these uh, electrostatic charge potentials of X amount of charge at X level of uh, each electrostatic dynamo, which comprises the atom, to form these molecules and to merge and create more and more and more complex molecules. Explaining Mother Nature does not require, you know, counting electrons in their valence shells. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. There cannot be any such thing as an electron. Wireless power induction, which has nothing to do with the flow of electrons, at a distance, you know, it's not the movement of electrons. It has to do with fields, but no branch of science has ever defined a field. None of them have. If you doubt me, you should go look. If you look, the, look up the word field, like on Wikipedia, you'll see a nice circular argumentation. Well, field is lines of force. It's a region of influence. Well, a region is not a thing. Saying force is a mere concept. There's such a thing as force, you know? There is no such phenomena as force. Force is not a thing. Force cannot be quantified. Sure you can. You quantify force in joules, watts, volts, and... Oh, that's a nice description and accurate, but force is not a thing. 
Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. You see, that confounds atomistic minds, and that's all everybody in science is, uh, scientific academia. They are atomists. They are materialists. They think, every, they think Mother Nature is this crazy broad with a bag of magic particles. Yes? You know, and she, uh, everything, all interactions are bumping particles. They think gravity is particles. They think, this is a fact. They think what's going on outside of a magnet is the is the uh, flow of virtual photons, something that's never been measured, completely arbitrary idea like a unicorn or a leprechaun. There's no such thing as virtual flo uh, photons or virtual particles flowing out of a magnet. It's completely ridiculous. It's absurd is what it is, anyway. So there is my little speech on the electron. The wisest minds of electrical field theory have told you there's no such thing as an electron particle. But maybe, just maybe you think you're smarter than them. It could be the case. You know, I, I know electrons exist. It's like, okay, so you know more than Tesla, Heaviside, Maxwell, and Steinmetz. Sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> no, you don't. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.